welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is a tag video. I saw this video on, uh, this tag on Miriam's channel, Miriam Elizabeth Reads, and it was just too perfect for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. I couldn't not do it. It's the 12 Days of Christmas book tag. And this year for Cloak and Dagger Christmas, our prompts are related to the 12 Days of Christmas. So it was just too perfect to pass up. So even though I wasn't tagged, I'm going to do this video anyway. I'm going to link to the original tag video in the description box below. So if you can check that out if you want to. And then I will also link to Miriam's video of this tag as well. So here we go. Prompt number one, a partridge in a pear tree. What is your favorite standalone book? Now, it is really hard to say that anything is my favorite. So one of my favorite standalone books is An Instance of the Finger Post by Ian Pears. This is a historical mystery set in Oxford in 1663. And I just love how this mystery is put together. There are four narrators who each tell their story in succession. And through that, you get the, the story of who is killed and who killed them. But what's so great about it is that each narrator, of course, is more focused on kind of what's important to them at that moment. So even though they tell what they know about the mystery, the things that they choose to focus on or ignore are related to kind of what's going on in their own lives. And so it's just a really brilliant way to tell a mystery and I love it a lot. Okay, two turtle doves. Who is your fictional OTP or favorite ship? Now, <laughs> I had to ask my friend Carolyn to uh, tell me what this means because if I hadn't seen Miriam's video and known that this is something about a couple, I would have told you, you know, I would have looked into my favorite ship and told you maybe it was the, the non-such or something. <laughs> but this is a favorite, a favorite couple or relationship. And I have to say um, that one of my favorites is Emma and Mr. Knightley from Emma by Jane Austen. This is such a great couple because they have such a good friendship before they even get together. And um, yeah, I just really love um, the pair of them as a couple. Three French Hens, what is your favorite trilogy? Again, I have a hard time with favorites of anything, but one of my favorite trilogies is um, the Fitzwilliam Darcy Gentleman series trilogy by Pamela Aiden. This is the first one called An Assembly Such As This. Then there is Duty and Desire and These Three Remain. This tells the story of Pride and Prejudice from Darcy's perspective and I really, really did enjoy this series. I thought she did a good job of staying true to the characters um, but telling the story from Darcy's perspective and I thought that was really great. Four Calling Birds favorite fictional beast slash character. This took me a long time because I don't read fantasy. <laughs> but then I remembered The Lord of the Rings and so I am going with Treebeard, um, who is an Ent from The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. I love Treebeard, he is awesome. I love that he just takes his time, he's true to himself, and yet plays a key role in the events of The Lord of the Rings. And so that's my answer. I'm going with Treebeard. Five golden rings show five golden books. Okay, so I'm going to start with When Christ and His Saints Slept by Sharon K. Penman. I am currently reading this right now. I'm doing a buddy read with um, a subscriber of mine, Anita. And um, I'm just getting into it. I've pulled, I put it down uh, for Cloak and Dagger Christmas, but I will definitely be picking it back up. I've been really enjoying this. And yeah, isn't that cover amazing? There's definitely gold on there. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to find out where to put this stuff. One second. 
Okay, next up is The King's Spy by Andrew Swanston. Dark secrets and treachery breed vicious murder in the English Civil War. This is part of a series that I really enjoy set in the 16, um, this one is 1643. So it's during the English Civil War. And uh, yeah, there's some lovely gold on that cover. Then we have Children of England by Alison Weir. This is actually a nonfiction about the heirs of King Henry VIII. So we have his son Edward, and we have Mary and Elizabeth, and maybe his son um, Fitz, what was his name? I forget, but anyway. Uh, and there's some lovely gold on that, also on the spine. White Rose Rebel by Janet Paisley. There's some nice gold on there. This is historical fiction um, set in Scotland, I believe. Yes. The Highlands suffer at the do domineering hand of English King George. While there are rumors that Bonnie Prince Charlie exiled to France is raising an army in a bid for the throne. So this book is inspired by the true story of a Highland heroine who risked everything for her country and its rightful king. And then the last one is 100% a golden book. <laughs> this is uh, Wars of the Roses Storm Bird by Con Igledon. This is the third in that series. No, it's the first one. Sorry, it's the first one. And is it ever gold? The whole thing is gold. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So this is historic, historical fiction set during the Wars of the Roses. Oh, and even this, like look at the end papers. It's a map. Isn't that fantastic? I love that so much. So yeah, this one is <laughs> definitely a golden book. Okay, Six Geese Laying, Rotten Egg. What's your least favorite book? Well, again, I have problems with favorites, most or least. Um, so I went onto Goodreads and I looked at the one star books that I have, and I had a number of them. So I decided to choose Swamplandia by Karen Russell. I had to read this years ago for a book club that I was in. It is set in the 10,000 islands off the Southwest coast of Florida. And it tells the story of the big tree family of alligator wrestlers who live in Swamplandia, an alligator wrestling theme park. It was crazy, and I remember not liking it at all. <laughs> Seven Swans a Swimming show a book with water on the cover. And I decided to go with Sea Jade by Phyllis Whitney. There's definitely water on the cover there. Eight Maids a Milking. What fictional food do you wish you could taste? Again, I, I thought about that for a while and thinking there isn't really any fictional food that I know of. And then again, I remembered the Lord of the Rings and I decided to go with Elvish bread. It's called Lembes. And I thought I would, I would be willing to try that. Some Lembes is definitely fictional food um, and I would totally try it. Nine Ladies Dancing. Favorite dance between two characters. Um, I decided to go for the dance between Darcy and Elizabeth at the Netherfield Ball in Pride and Prejudice. Their conversation during that dance is amazing. I love it so much. It's such a great scene. So that's the one that I'm going with. <clears throat> Ten Lords a Leaping. Favorite book to movie adaptation. And again, I have a problem with favorites, so I'm actually going to show you three. I love all of these adaptations so much I couldn't pick. So I'm going to go for North and South. It's um, by Elizabeth Gaskell, and this adaptation is fantastic. It's um, Richard Armitage and I forget, oh, Daniela Denby Ash. And Tim Piggott Smith is in it, as well as Sinead Cusack. It's just a fantastic adaptation. I really love it. I also love this adaptation of Emma. 
Um, it has uh, Romola Gari and Johnny Lee Miller, Michael Gambone. It's just, again, such a fantastic cast. I love that it's a mini series like North and South as well. It takes the time to really tell the story and I just love how they chose to tell the story. And then last but certainly not least is The Lord of the Rings. Um, I love this trilogy. So The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King. I just think it's, it's an amazing adaptation. And I know it's not perfect, but I like it. Okay, Eleven Pipers Piping, favorite book to movie adaptation soundtrack. Now, I've never seen this movie and I have no interest in it, but the soundtrack is unbelievably amazing. And that's the mission and the soundtrack is by Ennio Morricone. This soundtrack is unbelievably beautiful. It is gorgeous. I love it so much. Okay. And then 12 drummers drumming. It's the end of the song. What's your favorite book ending? This took me a while. I've enjoyed quite a lot of endings. And again, I have a hard time with favorites, but I am going to go with The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. The end of this is phenomenal. So, so good. Um, and I'm not going to spoil it, but it is a fantastic, fantastic ending. Okay, so that's it. That's the 12 Days of Christmas book tag. That was really fun to do. And so I am going to tag my fantastic Cloak & Dagger Christmas co-hosts. I don't know if they've done this tag already or not, but I think it would be really fun to do because Cloak & Dagger Christmas this year is all about the 12 days of Christmas, so why not? So I am uh, tagging Kate Howe, Kate from the novel Nomad, Mel from Melanie Martin, and Carolyn from Carolyn's Reading Ramblings. Carolyn, if you do this on Instagram, that would be great. So that's who I tag. I hope you've enjoyed this and um, if you uh, can leave a comment sharing your favorite, hmm, which one of these should I choose? I should have thought about this ahead of time. All right, let's go with something, something different. What would be, what is your, what fictional food would you like to taste? I would love to read your answers in the comment section down below, and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.